All right, guys. So in this case, a toy airplane suspended from the ceiling by a one-meter string is moving in uniform circular motion. The plane moves uh, in a plane 60 centimeters below the pivot point. Uh, it takes 1.9 seconds for a 200-gram uh, plane to complete one revolution. A, what is the radius of the circle? Well, we have one meter here. We have 0.6 meters here. Uh, so we need to find what the radius is. This is a job for the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, a squared plus B squared equals C squared. In this case, it's 0.6 squared plus B squared equals 1 squared. And then uh, would be B is equal to uh, 1 squared minus 0.6 squared divided, or square root is not divided. So 1 squared minus 0.6 squared uh, gives us, or, and then square rooted gives us B is equal to 0.8 meters. So the radius that we're dealing with is equal to 0.8 meters. All right, now, next step. What is the centripetal force acting on the plane? Well, we need to figure out what to do to find centripetal force. I'm going to go to the next page. Centripetal force, remember, if this, let's look at the plane from above, okay? So we've got the plane going in a circle. The circle has a radius of 0.8 meters. We know that it takes 1.9 seconds for it to go around. And we know that uh, the plane has a mass of 200 grams or 0.2 kilograms. Okay. So now we know this, if you'll remember, the centripetal force should be equal to, uh, sorry, should be equal to mv squared divided by r. Well, we have an r, that's good. We have an m, that's good. But we don't have a v. So we need to find a v. Formula for v is equal to 2 pi r over t, which is convenient because I have all those things. So we end up getting v is equal to 2 pi times 0.8 divided by t, which is 1.9. So v is equal to uh, 2 pi times 0.8 divided by 1.9 seconds, and we get 2.65 five meters per second. So then I come back over here and I can plug these things in now. Centripetal force then is equal to 0.2 times 2.65 meters per second divided by uh, the radius of 0.8 meters. So 2 times 2.65 uh, squared, forgot the squared, uh, divided by 0.8. And we should get 17, uh, oh, we should get 1.75 newtons, I'm sorry. 1.75 newtons. And that's the centripetal force. Alright, so we've got all that down. That's uh, question B. Now, oddly enough, this one goes to question D before it goes to C, but that's okay. So let's list out what question D is asking. This is a little bit tricky. Okay. So question D gives us this diagram. All right. It has a point here that represents the plane. Okay. Then it goes up, and that's A. What is that? Then it goes to this. This is C. Up, that is D. And down, this is B. And it asks us to identify, give the values for those forces, okay? Um, so, let us do that right now, okay? First of all, we have to recognize a couple things. Number one, A is equal to the tension uh, in the string. Number two, B is equal to the force of gravity. Number three, C is equal to the centripetal force. Number four, uh, D is equal to negative the force of gravity. Now, how do I know all these things? Well, first of all, I know that A is the tension because it's the string, right? That's, the, that's going along the line of the string. So I know that that's the tension. B, the force of gravity. Well, that's the force pulling down on the, the plane. So that's got, to be, uh, that's got to be the weight of it. How do I know D is negative the force of gravity? Well, that's the force that's resisting. That's resisting B, right? So D is resisting B. So these two 
are counteracting each other. And then lastly, I know C is the centripetal force because it's the thing that's keeping it in the circle. Well, we've already calculated the centripetal force. So I know, let's go ahead and give A, B, C, and D. I know C is 1.75. All right? And B, I can find really quickly, right? Because force of gravity equals mass times 10. So the force of gravity should equal 0.2 times 10, and that turns out to be 2 newtons. So uh, B is 2 newtons. Well, it's actually technically negative 2 newtons, so that D would be positive 2 newtons because it's resisting it. All right? So the force of gravity was 2 newtons, or sorry, the force of gravity was negative 2 newtons. That gives us B. Negative the force of gravity is D, which is 2 newtons. And then it should be fairly obvious that if I have 1.75 here and 2 here, I do the Pythagorean theorem to get A. So uh, A, in this case, is equal to the tension, which should equal 2 squared plus 1.75 squared square rooted. Okay, so 2 squared, 2 squared plus 1.75 squared square rooted equals 2.65 uh, or sorry, 2.66 tension is equal to 2.66 newtons. All right, and this gives us the answer for part D. Okay, moving on to question five.